If you can't decide if you want to be an edgelord or a tactical couch commando, why not both? All right, so gun blades did exist in history, just not quite the way you know from Final Fantasy, not too far off either, with the exception of not being ludicrously oversized, or firing blanks to make the blade vibrate on impact. What is going on with that? So let's look at a few examples. I'm talking actual gun blades, by the way, not just a bayonet attached to a musket or rifle. That's more of a blade gun, but either way, let's see what history has got to offer. There are a number of combination weapons. The sort of disappointing part is that a lot of them, if not most, were works of art first, functional weapons second. A way to demonstrate a high level of craftsmanship and for the owner to display wealth and status like a novelty collector's item. Although some of them were functional to varying degrees, arguably all of them were functional as such, because being able to pull this off, a combination weapon with mechanical parts, that actually works, that was part of the point. But uh, yeah, keep that in mind. Here's a German example from the Renaissance at the Met Museum in New York City. So you've got a sword right here with a wheel lock pistol attached to it. You can see the barrel is right there. There's a mechanism. So this is primarily a sword with an added firearm element. There are always some challenges when combining weapons. First off, that's quite a bit of extra steel right here that you're adding to the sword, which means you're adding weight that in and of itself doesn't really benefit you uh, when using it as a sword. And we can see this in the weight, although not as much as you might think. This is a little bit heavier than I would usually expect from a sword of this type, but it's not crazy. And of course the weight that you're adding is mostly toward the hilt. So you're not making it top heavy and thereby clumsier to wield. If anything, you might be moving the point of balance from say about here, just a little bit further up closer to the hilt, which is with a thrusting oriented blade, really not a problem. I can't really see where the trigger mechanism is on this, probably somewhere on the grip around here. From the same time, also 1580, we've got a pistol falchion. There's a blade and you can see the barrel is part of it right there. And there's a the lock. The trigger I'm assuming is this right here. So if I see that right, it seems you have to fire it with your offhand. At which point I have to ask, why not use a pistol in the offhand? That way you can use the falchion in the main hand and you can use the pistol anytime you want. If that's not enough for you, how about a hammer falchion pistol? That's what happened here. <laughs> so the blade is split in two. Uh, one part turns, terminates in a falchion blade, the other one in a hammer pole. And you still have the pistol right here. This, I really doubt, is practical in any way, shape, or form. So first off, any time you add multiple pieces, the more parts you have, the more moving parts you've got, the more can fail, particularly under stress. If you slam weapons together, you know, in a parry, or if you hit something, even if it's just a body, there's going to be a lot of uh, impact shock traveling through it and um, you know vibration all of this you know each one of these parts can be hit by accident during a sword fight and then this chunky piece of steel pulls the balance a lot further up so this is going to be much less agile than a sword i suppose it's sort of counterbalanced by having the extra metal here so you've got that but that means the entire thing is way heavier so I'm pretty sure this was not intended for fighting. Could be wrong, but I highly doubt it. Another one from the Met Museum. This is from the early 16th century. A hunting knife with wheel lock pistol. It's got this sort of meat cleaver looking blade shape and the barrel goes across the entire length of it. The specific weight isn't given on this one, but they mention that it's a heavy blade and point out that combination weapons like this were often clumsy and impractical. As said, really more of a novelty collector's item. And this might be a pragmatic admission of the drawbacks of trying to slap two different types of weapon together. 
the firearm part is removable. So you can use the knife by itself, um, even though with how elaborately decorated it is, you probably wouldn't want to anyway. But it's an option. This would also help with loading and maintaining and cleaning the firearm part, of course. So there's something to be said about that. But again, there's also something to be said about just not combining them. But you can also do it in a way that's not overly heavy. Here's a gun saber from the Netherlands between 1655 and 1660. And this one only weighs 954 grams, which is roughly about two pounds. That's not bad at all. The barrel is invisible in this picture. It's on the other side of the blade. You can see the lock right here. So this is the pan. That's where the powder goes. And you can see the touch hole right there. So. Put the powder in there, the frizzen comes down to cover it, and then you cock the hammer. This one doesn't have a flint, but the flint strikes the frizzen to strike a spark, which then ignites the powder right here. The flash goes through that hole into the barrel on the other side where you've got the main charge. So it ignites that and then you fire. And you can see the trigger right here. So you can reach the trigger while holding onto the saber which is a better design. There's a bit of an ergonomic challenge here because the way you best hold a pistol and the way you best hold a sword are mutually exclusive, pretty much. Because a, it's not a sword obviously, but a sword you hold you know, either in a hammer grip or in a handshake grip, like slightly forward, but a firearm obviously you have to tilt all the way down. So that's pretty difficult with this. With a pistol, a more or less 90 degree angle is helpful to align it properly. So you can actually keep your wrists straight, which allows you to absorb the recoil better. And it also just points more naturally. Now, from personal experience, I can say that older pistols are definitely a bit more awkward to handle. It's absolutely doable. You can aim with them and everything. It's just a little bit more awkward, and particularly something with a large caliber that kicks back substantially is noticeably less comfortable when you have to overextend your wrist like that to point it. Now, I can see one way in which you could redesign this a little bit to probably make it fairly ergonomic. This is the idea I had, and I marked it as edited right here so that nobody ends up taking this picture and running with it and claiming this is the original. So I removed that trigger and what it did was put a thumb trigger here and also change the grip angle. So it's much more strongly curved right here, but it's also longer. So you're able to hold on to this part like a regular saber, but if you want to fire it, you could hold it here like a pistol all the way at the end and you would be able to operate the thumb trigger on top there so you can point it naturally and uh, fire it a bit more easily that way. Here's a Spanish pistol sword from the 18th century and this is also again a sword first and foremost so pointing it like a pistol as such isn't really an option. However, it's also easy to overstate this problem because if you think about it, it's pretty similar to thrusting with a sword, right? Because with a sword, the point needs to go toward your opponent, which you know, in a hammer grip isn't that easy. Like you wouldn't want to overextend your wrist. I've made another video about that. You can check it out in the description if you like, if you haven't seen that yet. But there are ways to change the grip angle. You know, one is to put a finger over the guard so you, you're able to put it in a more forward oriented position. So in any position where you're able to thrust at the opponent, you would also be able to fire at them with a weapon like this. It's just that aiming with this like a pistol just isn't a thing. You would have to overextend your wrist to the point of it becoming painful and um, it's just not ideal. So that's an option that you don't have here that you would have with a pistol in your offhand. But again, you wouldn't have to use this while aiming. You could just kind of generally point it at an opponent, particularly if it's really up close. If it's just kind of an extra trick up your sleeve, if you intend to fight mainly with the sword as such, and then you've got this one chance, one shot to, um, maybe at least throw the opponent off guard or wound them or, startle them or something. Is that worth the extra weight and weird balance? 
It's cool, so it's tempting to say yes, but... Mm. This gun katar, on the other hand, is quite a good idea, really. For one, you're not adding all that much weight because these are pretty short barrels. And naturally, at when you hold it, it's already aligned the same way as a pistol is. So this is at a 90 degree angle, so you can absorb the recoil very well. Although, those don't look like very large caliber barrels, but either way. And you can reach the triggers easily, so that's not a problem at all. This is actually quite good. Uh, but even so, they didn't become mainstream. This is something I would love to see in a video game. Just imagine a character with one of these, you know, stabbing an enemy with a mean uppercut and firing a barrel or both. Damn. This video is not sponsored, but you're sort of a shameless self-promotion. I've got new merch. I teamed up with Bonfire because I noticed that a number of people were moving away from other platforms to Bonfire because of superior print quality, and I can definitely agree with that. This is the Canadianized version of my channel logo, and uh, you'll uh, recognize these two right there. So we've got this in uh, various colors with a number of clothing options. There's also the old End Him Rightly design, a little bit polished up. Uh, this comes in two versions with light and dark text, so you can actually see it depending on the color you choose. So uh, really comfortable. This hoodie right here I quite like. Definitely recommend that. And uh, yeah, how can you not want this on your chest? There are probably reasons, but hey, <laughs> check it out down below. This design here I like quite a lot too. It's elegant and sleek, and it's got even a trigger guard right there. It's got the knuckle guard as well for the hand. Um, you've got the barrel right here. Again, this is a pretty small one, so it shouldn't add a whole lot of weight. Also considering that the maker went with a fairly thin knuckle guard and no extra quill on or anything, so they clearly tried to save some weight as much as possible. And it looks great aesthetically. Again, you can't really aim with it, but for point and shoot, it's fine. And this is a perfectly functional saber. I don't think this is really a significant disadvantage over a design without that. I mean, sure, you could have a more protective guard, you know, like the added weight of, of the extra steel, you could put to better use for just a melee weapon as such, but this clearly emphasizes the melee weapon aspect of it and that's kind of often the problem it's like if you want to mix two weapons you generally have to emphasize either one or the other or you end up with something that's just a shoddy compromise where both of them don't work as well in this case the saber works really well the firearm is okay i would guess in the 19th century when cartridges were available you had more options now it was no longer just a single shot firearm but now you could have a revolver you know like this pinfire revolver saber so this is pretty neat in that you have multiple shots and ergonomically it's it's all right you've got the trigger right here so you can keep your hand on the hilt of the saber you know, still fire it. The hammer is right there. It's easily accessible. I don't know if this one is double action or single action only. Either way, it wouldn't be too difficult to operate. And you've got the hand protection here too. So it is shaped like a regular saber. It offers you what a saber does, just again with the you know, certain disadvantage of more weight and the balance being closer to the hilt, which, you know, is... Pros and cons. The balance is really just a matter of what you want to emphasize, cutting power or agility. And uh, so this looks pretty reasonable. Also, this does not look like simply a novelty kind of deal. This does have a functional aesthetic to it. And uh, there are a few cases where combination weapons like this were actually used by the military. Not many. One such rare example is the Elgin or Elgin Cutlass Pistol, which was patented in 1837, manufactured just for a few years, but it did find some limited use with the US military at the time, just never became all that popular. And this is basically the classic gunblade look 
that we're familiar with. So in this case, we've got the opposite emphasized. This is primarily a pistol and a knife second. So essentially, this is like a bayonet that's fixed to it permanently, semi-permanently, because it's got screws, so you can remove this, but it's a more integrated part of the firearm. So for firing, this is more useful because you can actually aim with it, even though um, this tiny front sight here and no visible rear sight, uh, it's gonna be limited, but you can point it more naturally. I imagine muzzle loading it would be a little bit awkward, which is often the case with these combination weapons because the blade is partially in the way, so you don't have as much space to pour in the powder and put the ball in and ram it down with a ramrod but um, it's doable. At the same time, it's basically the same as a pistol with a bayonet. And obviously bayonets are perfectly functional and practical and everything. There are still even uh, pistol bayonets on the market nowadays. Um, I imagine not for serious use for the most part. An earlier take on that concept is this uh, spear blade pistol thingy. Um, I don't know if this is detachable, but it looks like it probably is. In fact, it looks like it's simply attached to the ramrod. Speaking of which, this is a disadvantage of muzzle-loading firearms with integrated blades. The blade takes up the space where normally the ramrod could be stored, which increases the risk of losing the ramrod, at which point you can't load the firearm and then it's just a glorified club. How much sense does this make, you can ask? With a pistol like this, if you fired your one shot and aren't able to reload, you could just grip it by the barrel and strike with this right here. In fact, a lot of them have metal reinforcements at the butt for exactly that purpose, to be able to use this as an improvised bludgeon. Of course, in this case, uh, you wouldn't really want to do that. But it, is this better than just using it as an improvised short club? Yeah, marginally. Um, I don't think it's necessarily that much of a difference. In fact, you could also simply strike with a barrel, just holding it like a pistol. This would still hit pretty hard. This blade revolver is the same idea, basically, and uh, pretty much a miniature version of the Final Fantasy gun blade. So there's really nothing particularly wrong with this, I think. This is perfectly functional as a revolver, as is, and um, yeah, just happens to have that blade, it doesn't add a whole lot of material, and a certain level of added weight can actually help you with a firearm by mitigating the muzzle flip. Basically, the more weight you have at the front, the more tiring it is to hold out and aim with and hold steady, but the less muzzle flip you have because that inertia kind of counteracts the recoil wanting to move the muzzle up. So you're able to take quicker follow-up shots, basically. You can also achieve the same effect with a longer barrel, which also has the advantage of higher velocity because the powder has more time to burn and build up pressure, and you know the bullet gets stabilized for a longer period of time with the rifling. So um, arguably, for the same purpose, a longer barrel is better. But hey, again, this doesn't add all that much, and it's a perfectly functional firearm. So sure, why not? Probably the strangest version I found is this right here. It's a pistol, but it's got a dagger inside it. So you uh, pull off the barrel and then you've got a pistol grip dagger. Um, okay. Um, why not just attach a bayonet to it? Um, that would be easier, but it's a neat idea. And again, beautiful craftsmanship, so it's hard to trash whoever came up with this. It is quite pretty and certainly unique. Believe it or not, I saved the craziest one for last. This is a dagger with a hollow blade that actually has a barrel inside of it and a removable tip plug that reveals this barrel. Yeah, uh, can, we, can we agree this is just for the craftsmanship? This is really just a show off piece. It doesn't get any clearer than that, I mean, if you try to stab someone with this, you would lose the plug in their body and um, good luck getting that back out. Not to mention, this is there's a lot of 
parts sticking out that can be hit. And I mean, why, why am I even explaining this? This is very clearly just an art piece, but a cool one. Can't deny that. I found blade pistol designs by a modern maker, which are really good. This is the way to go for a compromise, in my opinion. With this kind of grip angle, you know, it's forward angled, not too much that it would make the, the knife unusable as a knife, but enough that it makes pointing it as a pistol more natural and effective. And it, even the guard even turns into a trigger guard. The trigger is over the guard, which makes perfect sense for this, which again, tilts it more forward, which makes the, the angle more effective. And there's also a beautiful design. It's not a terribly long barrel. This is definitely a good way to do it. Uh, would I personally prefer having a knife of this size and a separate pistol in the offhand? Yes. But this is a very cool weapon overall, or again, art piece, and definitely deserves some respect. So to sum it up, gun blades have the same drawbacks and limitations as most combination weapons, or at least exotic combination weapons, because you could call something like, again, a rifle or musket with a bayonet a combination weapon of sword. But, um, you know, if you're trying to combine two very different types of weapons into one that often has comes with a cost. Either you emphasize the functionality of one over the other, or you compromise and both aren't quite as good as the individual things by themselves. But there's a fascination to it. You know, back then in history, they found this cool. Nowadays, we find it cool. And uh, it's definitely not impossible. Anyway, that's all I've got. Hope you found it interesting. Thanks for watching and have a good one, folks.